Hello everyone. Today we are going to look at how to create a logo using the shape tool. Okay, so we, we will learn how to bring a reference image, how to trace the logo using shape tools, and then how to give it thickness and a bevel like this. All right, in the process we will learn uh, how uh, 2D shapes are used and what are the different options available for modeling using 2D shapes. All right, so let us get started. Let us save this file. As okay, we'll go to a file new general. We don't need this. We have to add image, background, and select your image. Mine is saved in the Blender folder, 3D modeling, logo. I downloaded this uh, logo online, search for Batman logo. And then save image as you can make it big. I found one which has a thicker boundary. I think it was this one. Save image as bitmap. Okay. So bring that in, and you can see that the orientation is strange. So make all these a zero. You can hit the N key to get this window. Okay, now we need to move this down because when we create our shapes, they will be on this line. All right, now we don't want this object to get selected by mistake while we are working on this, while we are tracing. So we will go to our selection here and then we'll turn this on. And then it, this background image is called an empty. So if you hide and hide it will also freeze it so now you cannot select it okay so we'll go to the top view and now the first thing is to create the outer ring so we'll go to add curve circle all right so this circle might, might become a little difficult to see while working on it for example we have to scale it out okay and then sometimes because of the black background it may be difficult to see so what we need to do is in the uh, this option in the circle option we will go to geometry and we'll give it a bevel Okay, you can see once you give a bevel, so we'll just give a very slight bevel to it, so it will be visible for to us when we are working on it. Okay, you can make it a little less. Double zero one. That's very less. So double zero five probably will be a good number to see. All right. <coughs> so now we will scale it outwards scale it this way so you get this one okay so you got this now we want the inner one so I'll go to modeling and when you go to modeling you can see that you see those normals the direction of the spline if you go here you can make sure that the direction is not visible that's unnecessary hassle for us all right, now we will select the whole thing, Shift-P, right click, and then we will scale it inside slightly, okay? So if you go to the line tool again, and if you make it 2D, and fill mode is both, then you get the thickness, okay? 
and then the thickness if you go to geometry again we will extrude it so you can simply drag for the extrusion and then you can see 0.1 all right so we'll extrude it 0.1 Okay, so we'll go again to our top view and modeling and top view again. You can see through it, and then it looks like this point shift this point can be scaled out all right so that's the outer line now we will work on the inner part so we'll go to add curves and this time we are going to use bezier all right so same thing with bezier we will create a bevel of 0 0.01 for example okay now we will go to modeling right. we need to be in shade anyway so the handles are too long because this guy is going to be here. Now we need to move it. It's going to be here and this guy is going to be here. All right, so now the handles are too long. So you can select the handle and make it small. Same with this handle. this handle will become small all right so a line has two vertices and two vertices have will have these two handles and half of this line will be controlled by this handle and half of this line will be controlled by this word handle okay so you have to make sure that you understand this important aspect so this has to be in the middle here and then I'll move it up and there is a slight curve. It's not straight actually. In this logo it's straight, but the other logos it's not straight. So we'll have slight curve there. All right, the other important thing is what type of handles these are. So we will look at that after I extrude this. So if you extrude this E, we'll get another line, okay? So if you can see now, if I select one handle and move it, the other handle also moves with it okay so this also moves when i so it is countering all right and then you can see that the line we are getting is a curve so if you click here right click and view handle type so right now it is automatic if you make it vector then oops we'll go back to y z okay Shift. So if I drag this now, now this is the corner, okay? So you can see that better if I do it here. So now you can see there is a smoothness here. If I right click and say vector, you get a sharp edge. Okay, I'll do the same thing here, right click. vector okay the other one is you can also hit the V key and then you the other one is free so those two are separate and this is automatic so they are connected all right so you need to understand that once if it is free then you can move both and then if there is a curve like if in this curve if there's a vertex then it has to be automatic all right and then at the edges it has to be free so I'll select this 
hit the extrude key and then click one here then either I can click one here or I can click one here I'll, I'll show you both and how it works you just need very few vertices to create all your all this so we will extrude it and then put it at these points okay so now we will simply control these handles to get the design result. Move tool, and then this goes here. This handle, and this will control this. So it will, this, uh, better curve here so this will come with practice you just have to practice this and then with practice you will get good results so half of this will control half line half of this will control half line now here I have a small handle and here I have a long handle because there's a curve here and then this one if you look at it it has a smoothness to it so once we work on this that smoothness will come so I, this will don't pull the handle too much just work on this then work on this one here and then you can again come back to this and fix things okay and then this small handle will give you that small curve there okay now this line Will be controlled by this handle so again don't move it too much on one side and here it might sometimes become a little difficult to control this so here the distance is here then you will keep moving it for a long time so you can add an additional point so to add, add a point you can select this vertex shape select this vertex right click and subdivide all right so this point is added and this has to be if you hit the v key it has to be automatic all right so you will have a better control over how the curve is bending so we want this to be straight and short and again this will come by practice so you need to spend some time if you have used Illustrator, you will understand how things work. It is similar to the Illustrator Bezier handles. All right. So here I can use simply move this here, move this here, okay, and then move this here, and move this here. So we got that one. Select this one here. Select this one here, and then the middle point. If you want to move it around, okay. So we got this shape. This one seems a little bit too too much. What I'll do is I'll delete it, and I'll show why I'm deleting it. I'm keeping a gap there. Okay. So that is done. I go to layout and this line I will then shift key to duplicate right click and I'll hit the N key and find out which rotation I want I want this to be 180 simply type 180 there okay and then N key to hide that so I created the other half And then you can position it where you want now we need to connect these two so shift this and control J and it's connected now we need a line between these two so I'll select these two vertices okay, in modeling select these two vertices select. and I'll hit the F key 
and F will connect these two. Okay, I need to do the same thing here. It cannot be separate. Okay, so I can again delete this. Select this one. Shift select this one. And F. And then I can again simply move this up to complete the inside part. So again I need the extrusion point one I think it was plus 2D and both and there you go. So this object is separate, the other one is separate so I can select both of them and hit Ctrl J to connect, now both are connected, I'll move it aside. Okay then you can increase the bevel if you want, so our bevel is 0 0.01 if you want 0 0.02, you can have more bevel. Offset can be rest if you want to reduce the thickness to counter the minus 0 0.02. Counter the bevel. Now you can see that this bevel 0 0.01 it completely distorts the curve with just a small number. Okay, now if you look, if you go to the object and viewport display and wireframe, you can see that it's a really complicated geometry. So it's not advisable to use this option if you are going to further modify this. But if this is going to be your final result and then you're going to just use it for some purpose then it's a good idea all right so keep that in mind that the geometry is quite complex when you create this type and then it can further get complex if you increase the resolution so see this wireframe here then go to the line tool and then if you increase the resolution you will get a smoother curve but the geometry will be too much so I think 12 or at the max 18 seems like a good number Alright, but don't do anything more than that. So there's your logo. Thank you.